So welcome everybody again to Activate University. So we're going to have a blog review class today. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at blog posts that you guys have written. Um, Helen and, and Larry and Anna Cordes, they're kind of in our backyard and I'm, I'm very familiar with, with Anna Cordes. So I picked this post out and, and one of the reasons I use this post because it's a good example of kind of a neighborhood level blog post. And the, the skyline area of Anacortes is a pretty um, desirable neighborhood in Anacortes, so it would make sense that they would want to rank for a post of that nature. So let's just get in here. We're going to kind of, I'm going to do this based on the things that we talked about in our SEO class. So the very first thing I'm going to look at is going to be the title of their blog post. And I think they did a really good job with the title of their blog post. In fact, this would be, ex I, I, there's no suggestion that I can even make here. This is a great title for a blog post. Then they get in here and let's just check, do they have kind of those three to five usages of that exact keyword phrase? And so we see, here's the first one. And, and the way that I'm going to search for this is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do homes for sale in Skyline. And this is just, you can, see, you can see my fine thing here. This is kind of highlighting those usages. So. I've got the first one, which they start their blog post with, which is exactly what we want to do. I'm going to go to their next one, and, and this is perfect, okay? What they do here is they've got a call to action, which is a link, and if we were to come over here, I'm going to go ahead and guess that this is going to give us properties in Skyline Anacortes, and there's 18 currently available here, so they've done a really good job of giving me that really clean segue, that clean call to action, that clean way for a consumer to get back to their website and actually look for, for properties in this area. One of the things that I might have, have considered for them, because I don't necessarily want to land somebody on like a, a mortgage spot or something, they could have done some kind of min and max prices in here to get a little bit better representation of the homes. They could have also flipped these things from high to low on the price and maybe use this link, although that's, you know, again, getting some high stuff. I'm trying to kind of give a sweet spot in here, but that's okay. They do a good job of kind of landing you on just those homes in the skyline area of Anacortes. So there's their second usage of the keyword phrase. Let's see if they get another one in here. And then they've got one down here at the end. So they've got three Let's see if there's another one. There's, there's not. That, that now gets outside the box. So they've got three usages of that keyword phrase in there. Let's go take a look at their image. And so when I roll my cursor over their image, you'll see it says home in Skyline Anacortes WA. That's their image title. And the words on there, that home in Skyline Anacortes Washington that you see in the yellow, that will actually be counted as as part of the keywords on the page. So let's see what this, is this a live map? No, so they took a screenshot of the map. Um, it gives you kind of the outline of the neighborhood. I definitely like that. Um, and they use Skyline Neighborhood. So they have three usages of their keyword phrase. One of the things that they could have done is they could have come in here and for the, for the image title, now, not the image description, okay? The image description is going to be what the search engines identify that and rank that for that image if somebody was doing like a Google image search. But for the image title, they could have used their exact keyword phrase again. And that would have been a fourth usage of it. And then they could have gotten in here and used it really both times. But that could have been a fifth usage of it as well. So they're on the low end of our three to five, which is okay. But if they could bulk this up maybe with like an image title right here, of homes for sale in Skyline Anacortes WA, that might um, put them in a little bit better position. So one of the things now that I want to look at is kind of what is the rest of the content here? And they do a pretty good job, OK? They talk, talk about the types and the styles of the homes, the weather, um, the amenities in the area. They get down to, you know, they're showing you a map over here. They talk about the Skyline Marina. They talk about kind of the, the local residents. Um, you know, I might, one of the things that I always look at in these types of posts is this kind of thing right here. This, you know, we've got this basic information 
that we can give somebody, you know, this is what's happening, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if I'm a consumer reading this, and we always look at these posts from two sides, okay, from the search engine side, that can we get this thing to rank, and then we look at it from the consumer side, and if somebody was to land on this and start going through, I think they're going to get a pretty good idea that Helen and Larry know what they're talking about. So beyond that, what else can we do? And one of the things that I see being very effective for people is the ability to kind of personalize your knowledge of this area. And I think she, she's getting in the right direction here where she's kind of talking about, you know, what the residents call themselves, but what can you get into a blog post that's that's kind of personal about your knowledge of the area. So if they've sold homes in this area in the past, you know, I might put something about that in there. Heck, if they live in this neighborhood, I mean, that might be something that they would consider putting in there. But something that really personalizes um, your knowledge of this neighborhood for somebody that might actually read this post. Now, from a search engine perspective, you know, that's not going to be, um, you know, a major differentiating factor. But from the perspective of somebody landing on this blog post, and thinking to themselves, like, are Helen and Larry the person that I want to, you know, contact to find my next home for sale in here, or contact to potentially sell my home for, for sale in the Skyline area of Anacortes? I, I think that she should expand a little bit here, or he should expand a little bit on this section right here, where they're kind of giving that personalized um, touch to the blog post. I notice they've got a couple of other links in here that um, that they're using. They've got a link for the marina. They've got a link, it looks like, for the HOA, and then a link for the rain shadow. Um, one of the things that they don't necessarily have at the close is another call to action for this particular blog post. Now, they've got some calls to action in their signature line down here. Okay, and this is their signature line, so we're going to see this on every one of their blog posts, is my guess. I want to have a good call to action at the bottom of this post as well, because if somebody, you know, reads through and they don't necessarily want to get looking at the listings right away here, I want to give them another chance down at the bottom. And on that link, I would have used a slightly different phrase for my anchor text. So instead of homes for sale in Skyline, and of course, I might have, you know, said something like, hey, click here to view properties that are currently available in Skyline Anacortes or something like that for this kind of closing call to action for this blog post. Okay, I, I want to look at this one because I have a feeling the reason she sent this to me is she's probably thinking to herself, you know, I wrote this post and I, I think I've kind of gotten a lot of the good, um, you know, a lot of the good kind of tenants here, but I'm not necessarily showing up on these first couple of pages. And in fact, as we look through here, it, it starts to become like, okay, well, why isn't, why aren't they showing up here? And there, there could be a couple of reasons for that. And when you start to see like Zillow multiple times and truly multiple times, this really starts to become a concern for me of why aren't they showing up here yet? So the, the first thing that I want to suggest to them is I'm going to come over here and look at their profile. And this is going to tell me if they have Google authorship set up yet, and they don't. Okay? Uh, Carrie is going to give you right now a link, and it's this link right here, activerain.com forward slash Google dash authorship. This is going to be important for each person that we look at. Because what Google authorship will do is it will identify for Google that you're a real person creating this content, and there's a really good chance that in that case, they're going to improve our rankings just based on the fact that they can identify us as an author. And as they continue to write blog content and Google continues to identify them as the author of that blog content, it's going to dramatically improve their rankings. And in fact, as we come over here and we, we go back and kind of reset this search to page one, what we'll see is we'll see people showing up on this page, right, that have their Google authorship set up. So I want them to, 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 to get in here and set Google authorship up for their Active Rain blog. This post right here is a step-by-step -step tutorial on exactly how to do that 
for their blog. And again, it, that's going to identify for Google that they're the author of this thing, and it's going to it's going to in, increase their rankings. Okay. If nothing else, every time they write something, it's going to ping Google and say, "Hey, I've got a new piece of content out here. Will you come out here and and index this?" And as they continue to create content for their blog, it's going to um, you know it's going to increase their kind of reach with Google. Now, uh, Seattle's an interesting place, and you know so is <coughs> excuse me. So are you know Miami and Chicago and Phoenix. Some of these bigger markets that you guys are in, there's a lot of competition here, okay? And as I look at the first page for this, I see the usual suspects. And in fact, there's some suspects on here that you guys might not see in some of your markets, like Redfin. Um, I think Movados, they're, they're getting to be more nationwide, but we see the Zillows. When I see this sort of a representation here, what I start to think is maybe there's another level that they can go to, and I don't know Anacortes well enough, but I would have to believe that inside of this pretty large area of Anacortes, Skyline, which again is a neighborhood or a community, that there may be smaller segments. And if there are like smaller subdivisions, for instance, inside of the larger area of Skyline, because I know like in Renton, there's like a Fairwood area of Renton, and inside of Fairwood, then there's going to be Candlewood and Carriagewood and Fairwood Greens, and and there's you know a bunch of different subdivisions. They may consider getting even more granular and looking at that subdivision level. So um, you always kind of have to to gauge this stuff based on your particular market. So they've done a very good job here. Uh, you know, I think maybe get a little bit more information about you know, kind of the, the personalization of their knowledge of this area. I would get that closing call to action in here. I might even beef up my use of my keyword phrase a couple of times, okay? And because what starts to happen in here is it's possible that at only three uses of their keyword phrase, that there's some other phrases in here that they might have used, you know, three times or even more times than that. So really try to get to that five and again the the easy way because it doesn't always make sense to kind of stuff this you know not necessarily easy to use phrase into the body of the post another good way to get it in there is on the titles of these images the one thing that I see in here that concerns me just a little bit is this very first sentence homes for sale in Skyline Anacortes are in a beautiful neighborhood located on the west side of Fidalgo Island I don't know that um, grammatically, and I'm not an English teacher, I don't know that grammatically this sentence actually makes sense. It might be something like, the homes for sale in Skyline Anacortes are in a beautiful, and maybe she might even want to include like some commas in here to get proper sentence structure. And some of the more recent Google updates, the pandas and the penguins and all the furry little animals, they're looking more at like sentence structure. And so it's not going to hurt her to use like the in here or to try to get this thing as close to like real sentences as possible um, again right here you know she could have used the homes for sale in Skyline and of course range from waterfront luxury homes with you know, just including that that proper sentence structure can help her because it shows the search engine that this was you know written by a real person that's not you know not outright trying to manipulate the, the algorithm, right? They're giving us good content, but they want to make sure it's in a manner that somebody reading it's going to make sense to them. So I would get in here and probably, you know, use words like the or and or, you know, words that make the thing read a little bit more appropriate for a real person that landed on this. Because again, over the years, Google's getting better and better at understanding. Um, you know, the real way that we, we read and write. Bob, a couple of questions are coming in about putting commas or the in the title. What say you about that? I would keep the commas and the thes and that sort of stuff out of the title. Get very specific with, with your title. Because as, as I look at a lot of search data and I, and I look at Google, our Google Analytics, people don't use searches and periods and that, or commas and periods as often in their queries. Now, 
those those sorts of things, like if, if we ranked for homes for sale in Skyline and a quarters WA just like this with no punctuation, we're going to also rank with the punctuation. So in the body of the post, consider more use of the punctuation than you would in the title. But um, you know, the reality is is it's not going to discount you, but I wouldn't use it in your title. I would get this very clean title like she has. In fact, like I said, I, I can't really I don't have any suggestion for a better title that that they could have used um, in here. Now, now another thing to consider here is, the, the, you know, she might come in here and take another shot at condos for sale in Skyline Anacortes, Washington. And and as I read through any one of these blog posts, there's all sorts of different ideas that I can get out of one blog post that I've written, like. You know, she's got waterfront homes in Skyline. She could do a blog post on that, right? She could do, um, you know, single-story homes or craftsman homes. There's lots of different kind of opportunities that come out of a blog post that we've written where we can look back and see, you know, what are some of the other things that we might want to target with their own specific blog post. Okay, so Steve says, in tough markets with big box competition, how do you feel about embedding a Google video embed and then linking the active rain page or even your website in the video description? I'm not Google video embedded. If you're talking about YouTube, I would definitely use YouTube videos in so you know if they had a YouTube video in here um, or, or they had their own YouTube video about the skyline area, I would embed that in here with no doubt and and when I put the video on YouTube, I would link back to my blog post. You betcha. Um, that's going to help my blog post perform better. That video is going to kind of give Google that kind of extra you know, data and, and letting them know, hey, there's really good content on this page beyond just the written content, right? There's this video content here. Yeah, absolutely. If you have video, please get it into your blog post. Um, that, and then, like Steve suggests, and this is a great idea, when you place that video on YouTube or, or maybe even later once you've written your blog post, go back and include a link to your blog post in the description on that video. That's just going to be another link back to your blog post helping to prop it up in the search engine. 